One of the added value features inside your chart is that if you make a chart of a certain type, you can also include a trend line. A trend line uh, shows the progress, shows, shows the trend of your data, either up or down or flat, uh, and it can be done in a variety of different methods, so different statistical methodologies, uh, and it can also be used to forecast future trends. Now, the assumption being that whatever the trend is, it will continue in that manner. So what I've done is I've taken just the Northeast sales, four quarters worth, that's all I have, and I've taken that data and I put it into a line chart. To add a trend line, I would go to the add chart element, come down to where it says trend line, and you can see that I can choose none, or I can choose a variety of different types. If I knew what I wanted, I could just simply take one of these and go. If I want to see all my options, I can click more trend line options down here. And that's going to open up what we see over here. Now, starting with your trend line options, you're going to see that you can choose different types. Exponential, linear, logarithmic, polynomial, power, and moving average. This video is not going to get into the depths of these, but you can Google and find uh, more information about how they're calculated. And quite frankly, there is a display equation on chart option where you would be able to then display and show what the equation is that's actually occurring right here. But generally, you know your data, you choose the one that, that looks more traditionally like your trend. So you can do it in there. Now, as we go down, you can give it a name. So if you'd like to give it a, a name, you can instead, or leave it as automatic. And you can forecast however many periods for. So if I were to forecast the next four quarters, I would be able to have it forecast into the future. Now, that's where these certain types really change because if it's linear or exponential, you might have much more drastic leaps, but logarithmic is going to actually kind of flatten out a little bit more and be a little bit more gradual. Moving average does not let you necessarily forecast because it's just consolidating multiple data points into an average that, that's a little bit easier and a little bit more rounded uh, overall. So you can choose kind of how you want to do that. You can display an equation, as you can see at the bottom here, the R squared value on the chart. Again, uh, this is one of these kind of features that people kind of play with. Some people really understand how to build trend lines using uh, statistical models. Other people just push the buttons, and it's kind of up to you to determine what level of knowledge you're going to want about trend lines uh, and being able to understand it. Uh, but it's a really simple thing to add as long as you're adding in one that's going to, to work for what you're looking for. So you choose your trend line, you throw it in, uh, and you can put it in. Now, that was just for one data point. If I actually had more than one data point, I could actually go back up to the trend line and it would ask me which series I wanted. So the trend line will also ask you which series specifically if you wanted to build one for a different one. So I could build a different trend line and then if you click each one, you can go and change all the same things if you want to. So you create your chart, and only certain charts will allow trend lines. The, the line charts are the best for them. Clustered columns will, uh, stacked columns won't. But you create your chart, you insert the trend line for one or more of the series that you want it to look at, and then you're going to be able to modify it a little bit and set it up, and voila, you have both a, uh, a smoothed out example of where your whatever is moving toward, uh, as well as the ability to forecast it into the future.